an unusual talent that picked up very late in grade school, blossomed into a great player, rose through the ranks, took him to places he never could have imagined. But one place he reached had an immovable brick wall. This is the story of Sean Ryan. Sean, Sean was always a little bit taller than everybody else, thin. When he played sports, he would outrun everybody. So when he was a young age, everybody said, oh, he's a great athlete. I'm like, no, he was just faster than everybody else, you know? So it kind of makes everybody look like a good athlete. And he was a pretty good athlete too, but he was just more fast. What made him different, I thought, two things I said you can't teach, speed and desire. Sean was uh, diagnosed with a type one diabetes, uh, March 7th, 2011. I don't like to tell people what's going on and I don't want people to worry about me because I like you, like there's people with other problems that are much more significant than mine. Oh my gosh, you're devastated at first. Um, geez, you probably cry for weeks and weeks at a time. You don't let them know about it. Um, you see your kid who's you know, 11 years old at the time, uh, he doesn't know what's going on. You know, when he's first diagnosed, he didn't know if he was gonna live, right? how long he's gonna live for. Sean had to make adjustments, not only in his daily life, but also in athletics. Now, a lot of people say, um, will ask about, you know, what does he do? Does he take a pill? Does he, you know, will he grow out of it? Because it's, you know, partially ignorance. I would be the same way because I didn't know much about it. And um, Sean probably puts 15 needles a day in his body. And people are like, wow, there's 15 needles a day he goes in that kid's body. I said, yeah. And I said, that's the easy part. And they're like, what are you talking about? 15 needles a day is the easy part. I said, well, so when you put insulin in your body, then you have to figure out if you're going to run or sprint, or are you going to have a test, or are you gonna be sick, or are you gonna sleep in? You know, you can get the highs and lows that go along with it. With diabetes, I get up at 6.30, check myself, then around 9.30, I check again. After lunch, I, I give myself the shots. Approximately 12.30, 1.30, I give myself another check. Two to three hours after that, see what the lunch did to me. 2.30 to 2.45, I have to check myself again. Take another prick and then take another shot. I take another a couple shots for that at night. Finally at 8.30, I take uh, another injection called Lantus, which uh, helps my blood sugars throughout the night. I check myself at around 2 a.m. So Sean has a lot to, do, to deal with. Um, never in my life have I ever heard him complain. Um, people will say sometimes to me like, oh, Sean's not jumping as high or he's not playing as well. I'm like, and we don't complain about things. He doesn't, so we don't. During that time, we're probably getting into the seventh grade, sixth, seventh grade time in which he had to quit most of the sports uh, because of breathing. When Sean was exercising, mucus started secreting and it would choke him. And so that's why his vocal cords would close. And he, we, somebody told us about boys volleyball. And so we tried it out. So we tried it out and it didn't have any effect on his breathing. There's not that much running to it. I mean, you just do a couple steps and you're good to go, unless if it's a little wrong, longer rally. Last year, or probably the year before the freshman year when he, when he started quite a bit as a freshman, I knew he was pretty good. Um, a lot of it was from athleticism. Um, and then when in last year, when he got with the youth national team, that's when I think he became very good because of a lot of coaching start helping them become a better player. Usually I'm confident when I play, but then I saw these guys play and they're bouncing balls and one kid's 6'10 and I'm like 6'4 and I'm trying to block them. And, and I called my sister, I'm like, all right, I could, if I'm an alternate on the team, I could still practice with them, but do I want to do that? Cause I'm just sitting around all day and practicing. And finally they told me the news and they were really casual about it. Like you made the team and it, it came down on me. Sean has not battled this fight alone. He's gone through it with the first team he's ever played for, his family. They all, in a sense, just represent like a different aspect of helping me. Like, whether it's emotionally, like I have my sister, and they're all, my mom, my dad, and my sister, they're all role models to me, and that, for one, is extremely helpful. And I mean, there's some things that you can't say to your parents, but you could always say to a sibling of yours, and I mean, that's, that's one thing I have like, for my sister, and I'm extremely grateful for that. Tim has taught Sean many valuable life lessons, but Sean has also offered life lessons in return. Just down the block, there's a house that was built a few years ago. It's a beautiful house. And we're driving down the street, and April-ish, and the guy has his Christmas lights over the front door. I says, look at that guy. He still has his Christmas lights over the front door. And he goes, do you think it's a beautiful house? I said, yeah, it's a beautiful house. He goes, why do you notice the one wrong thing instead of the whole picture of everything? And I'm like, ever since then, I. 
He, he's the most humble kid. He's gracious. You know, it, it's a kid who treats everybody the same. Being a high caliber athlete and an honor roll student is a lot to handle, but Sean has found an escape with music. Sports are a great thing. They, music you could do forever. And they thought, yes, this is perfect for you. So I started taking lessons, I believe in third grade, at a sound education in Brookfield. And from there, I transferred on just to playing by myself. And I was in a band in eighth grade at St. Cletus where I went to grade school at. And even this year, like I met new people out of it. And Brown Sock was, I, I have to say, Brown Sock was probably one of the best LT moments I've ever had. And it was so much fun to be a part of. Though that I may have some limitations on my health, I know that I can take this as far as I can and that the sky is the limit.